Hi, I'm Phil Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled What is the story of ESD capable or sometimes called capability rectifier? Let me start off with quoting some of the statements made in this article, ESD Protection for Power Electronics, ICs and Discrete Devices, published in the IEEE Power Electronics Magazine. And in one of the opening statements is that the simplest way to harden a system against ESD is to use ESD-capable rectifiers in the converter design. And here are some examples given in this article. Here we see here a TVS protecting a system, and here is a rectifier, but this is the ESD-capable rectifier. And then it says that they, that is the ESD-capable rectifier, can also be used to as a reverse polarity protection diode. Well, any diode can be used, of course, but as shown in figure one, here is the rectifier is placed in front of the TVS diode to protect the TVS device as well as the load and to protect the load from reverse polarity connection to the DC input. So it is sort of protecting the TVS. And then there is another example here, and this is a transistor, and then we have the back-to-back -back, these ESD-capable diodes or rectifiers, and it says that uh, also we can further protect MOSFET by inserting an ESD protection diode between the gate and source terminal as seen in figure 6. So these are the examples given for this uh, ESD-capable rectifier, but Unfortunately, I think these are just the promises and the reality is a bit different. So let's have a look first. What is the ESD capability or capable rectifier? It's not protection. It is the ESD capable. And here it says that ESD capability rectifier. So we see that this is a diode or rectifier. And it says here that it has an ESD capability. Now, as far as the forward conduction goes, it's very similar to any other diode like the uh, 1N4000 family. Here's the ESD capable rectifier. It's a 1 amp rectifier. There are two versions, 400 and 600 volts. You see that the forward uh, peak current is 15 amp, and then uh, the forward voltage is one volt, this is not really relevant to what we are talking about. On the other hand, the 4000 family is also here one amp, but you see that in this case for 8.3 millisecond sine wave, it can hold 30 amp, this is only 15 amp, and this is a single pulse. And here for the single pulse of one millisecond, it could be 45 amp. So in fact, in the forward direction, this is a must stronger rectifier. So the question is, what makes this particular unit ESD capable? And here they are actually showing a table which is related to this ESD issue. And what we see here is various tests that you can subject a unit to. And let's have a look at the last one. And it says C150 picofarad. R330 ohm, and then the voltage is larger than 15 kilovolt. That's a bit high, usually it'll be like 4 kilovolt. And this to the standard, the test ESD, which is IEC 61000-4-2. And there are different values here for the testing for various classes. And what it is, in an approximation, this is not a correct network. What it is that you have a setup like this in which you charge the capacitor to a high voltage and then you discharge the capacitor into the test unit through this resistor. So this is the capacitor and, three, and this is this resistor. Now let's say that the voltage is 4,000 volt. The resistor is 330 ohm. So the current, maximum current will be 12 amp. Now the voltage is very high of the capacitor, but this unit is supposed to break down. So it doesn't see the voltage. It has to break down and sustain the current. This is the requirement of this 
ESD capable device. So this particular rectifier will withstand these test conditions. Now the pulse is very short. We're talking about a time constant of 22 nanoseconds, so it's a 100 nanosecond pulse. It's a short pulse, we'll see it in a minute. And this is how this unit will be tested for the ESD standard. And here's the waveform from the standard. This is the formal waveform. And here we're talking about the current. So the current is going up to 100% at a very short time, it's a very fast rise time, and there is some sort of an oscillation, and the total here up to this point is 60 nanoseconds. As I've said, we're talking about a 100 nanosecond pulse altogether from start to just about end. So what will happen if we'll have this uh, rectifier, ESD-capable rectifier? Now, if we are going to have an ESD in this direction, well, in the forward direction, it doesn't do anything because it's like a forward diode, and if there is an ESD, then the TVS will protect. But if the ESD current is in this direction, then this rectifier is supposed to be capable of withholding this current. So this is the point here. The point here that if it is a regular diode, that a reverse peak current, while it's in the breakdown condition, is too high for it, then it'll break down the diode or the rectifier, and this could in fact um, damage the TVS, but not because the circuit is protecting the TVS, but because the diode cannot withhold this current. So the objective here is to protect the diode so it will function correctly when you have this reverse current. So to have a closer look at this whole issue, I've set up an LTSPI simulation that will generate this ESD pulse. Now, I've taken the basic design from this website. I, it's modified uh, by me, but it's basically following this uh, circuit that I've seen here on this website. Now, what do we have here? We have two capacitors. This is actually to emulate the waveform of the pulse of the standard, okay? So we have two capacitors which are charged to whatever voltage we want, 4 kilovolt or 15 kilovolt, whatever, they are charged slowly. So these are large resistors, so they don't interfere with the actual operation within the pulse period. And then we have a switch, uh, two switches that are working together. And these are the resistor, the limiting resistor. And then there is some shaping uh, waveform inductors that are used to get the correct waveform of the pulse, okay? And now I'm going to run it for just a resistive load with steps of 1 ohm, 10 ohm, 100 ohm, and 1 kilo ohm. And here it is. So the current goes up to about uh, 15 volt. And the voltage on the resistor, of course, uh, will be like a high voltage because uh, we have a resistor and there's nothing breaking down. Uh, so therefore we have this whole voltage on the resistor. But this is just to show this uh, waveform that this generator is actually capable of uh, putting out. Now I'm going to test three diodes. One is this ESD capable diode. One is the 1N4000 family, and one is a fast diode, okay, MUR460, it's a fast diode. So let's have a look at the waveform that we are going to get. I'm going to look at the voltage across the diode and the current through the diode while it's being exposed to this uh, pulse, okay? So let's start with what happens when we expose this uh, ESD-capable diode to the pulse. And here it is. What we see here is that the diode is actually breaking down. Now the voltage is remaining because the diode is like a capacitor. And then once you charge it, then the voltage remains until it will sort of discharge. And I'm sure here a short time, so we don't see it. And then we see the current. And the current is uh, 13 amp, 14 amp. And this is what the diode is supposed to be able to handle. This is the idea of the 
ESD capable rectifying, being able to handle this current in the reverse direction. Okay, now let's have a look at the 4000 family. Well, it doesn't look very good as a matter of fact. Now, of course, I don't know if these models are correct for these pulses. I have no idea. So uh, let's assume that uh, this the model of the 4000 uh, family is correct for the pulse. Okay, if we assume that, then we see that this is a very bad situation because the diode does not respond fast enough and the voltage on the diode goes up very high. The current is about the same current, a little bit lower, but the voltage is very high. It's, uh, uh, this, this is very dangerous, okay? But if I do the same thing with the fast diode, 400 MUR460, then you see that this behaves pretty much like this uh, ESD-capable rectifier. Again, I don't know if the models are correct, and this is just the empty spice simulation. But the point is that obviously there are some diode that will withstand it and some diode that will not. And there is no question about it. If you have a diode which is specified as ESD capable, it means that it will be able to handle this pulse and the current associated with it. Now, another possible application of this um, ESD capable diode, which has been su suggested, is to use it here for a full wave rectifier. Okay, the idea is that if you have a full wave rectifier and then you have a pulse, a ESD pulse, a high pulse, then some of the diode will break down. So let's have a look at it. Suppose that we are in the positive half cycle, this diode is conducting. And then you see that this diode now will see the ESD pulse, okay, coming here through this up to this diode, and it will break down. By this, it is sort of protect the load from the high voltage, well, not necessarily from the current. We'll see it. So I'm going to simulate it. And here it is. These are the diodes, and now I'm starting with a resistive load, okay, which is not very realistic but let's start with this and these are the diodes that are ESD capable and and what I have here is a sinusoidal waveform I made it very high voltage with a large resistor so that I can inject the ESD here without uh, actually losing any of the current into the source okay just, just to simplify the simulation and what we see here is that the voltage across the load will have these spikes and the current also will have the spikes depending on where it is within the cycle and so this is not a very good situation of course a more realistic case is in which you have a capacitor okay and then you have a rectification and filtering and in this case, what we see, well, there is some ripple here because the capacitor is not that large, but now the capacitor has to handle these spikes. So the spikes are not going away. They are actually penetrating into the system, although the voltage will be clamped, but still, if the clamping is higher than the output voltage, then obviously the pulses will go into the load and you will see these spikes into the load. So I don't know how good is this idea. So now I'm coming back to this suggestion of putting these at the gate. Well, this is not a very good idea because the available ESD capable rectifiers today have a breakdown of 400 or 600 volt. Well, obviously, you cannot put a six or 400 volt at the gate of a MOSFET to protect it. Doesn't make sense, of course, okay? So I would imagine that the intention here is to just put a regular TVS for protection, okay? So they have to be drawn as the TVSs, and there will be two TVSs back to back, and this, of course, could be the case, but there's nothing new about that. It has nothing to do with the uh, ESD-capable 
rectify. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.